Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day to everyone. So welcome back to this course BMFG 1213 Engineering Materials. So this is uh, chapter 6 Mechanical Properties of Metals and Alloy for part 2. Okay. In previous uh, lecture in part 1 you have learned uh, a few types of load which is compression, tensile ten, test and uh, shear and also torsion test. So basically what happened during that test? What deformation happened during that test? So this uh, part 2, I will explain detail uh, what happened or what occurred to the material if those material is subjected to stresses. Alright. Okay, basically there's two types, two types of uh, deformation when this material is subjected to the stresses. It is elastic, number one, and number two is plastic. What is elastic? Elastic is a reversible process. What does it mean by reversible process? It means that this material will uh, can be recovered back. Uh, right? Say, for example, you have a rubber band. You have a rubber band. Okay, you try to pull this rubber band, and after a certain time, you release, release it. So, what happened? This rubber band will come back into its position okay it's original position it means that it can recover back okay so it means that the formations are instantaneously recover recoverable compared to plastic material it is ir irreversible or non-recoverable okay it means that it's getting elongated or fractured deformation or we call it as a permanent deformation it will not recover back or it will not uh, recover into its original position okay permanent deformation here okay so here we have uh, this kind of tensional stresses compressional stresses and shear stresses if let's say it's a plastic you can see it's a plastic deformation this uh, material will actually break or crack break into two pieces same with this compressional stresses it will permanently deform. It will it will not uh, re uh, going back to its original position. Same with this shear stresses. Okay, so you can see here it will uh, break into two pieces if these plastic deformation occur on that particular material. All right. Okay, let us look at this stress strain curve. All right. When you do some tensile testing, you apply uh, tensile uh, stress. And then using UTM machine, so what you get is uh, this kind of graph, which is stress sigma versus the strain epsilon. So this stress is came from this formula, which is F your force over the A naught. It's for engineering stress strain curve. Okay, in this curve, in this stress strain curve, you will get uh, some information important information which is the uh, first proportional limits this is the proportion proportional limits point and then you will get these yield points very important point all right and then another thing is uh, UTS which is your ultimate tensile strength this means the maximum stress that can that you can give to this uh, the maximum uh, stresses the maximum load that can you apply to that particular material before it going to fracture because before it's uh, going to fail all right so this is uts point okay let us look at what is proportional limit okay proportional limit is a position where the proportionality is ended okay it means that this point is the end of this linear linear line right so this is the uh, discontinuous discontinuous of this linear line okay this point and this point which is your yield point more or less is close to each other and this proportional limit is usually it's really really difficult to uh, determine right because it is in a microscopic level so Therefore, what we do is we use a 0 0.02, 0 0.002 offset. We call it as strain offset. 
Okay, in next slide, I will explain detail on this offset. How we are going to get this kind of offset. So, uh, the other point that, that is really important is the yield point here. This is yield point. Okay, yield point uh, when you apply the uh, forces or stress beyond this yield point, it will become a plastic deformation. Plastic deformation. So it means that this yellow color is uh, having a plastic behavior. Your material become plastic behavior. And this blue color before, okay, before this, before this uh, yield point, if you apply your load before this yield point, your material will become elastic behavior. Okay, this blue color. Right, so this is very important. We need to determine where is the yield point on that in this stress strain curve. Alright, and then we if we apply, uh, if we continue applying the forces or stresses, then we will we will get this UTS, which is ultimate tensile strength. This is the maximum stresses that that particular material can extend before it collapse or before it's a uh, fracture and uh, note that in after this uts uh, point if we continue to apply load our material will start necking okay we start necking this is necking process And then continue until it fracture, it uh, become two pieces. Okay, it break into two pieces. Okay, so these are the important point in the stress strain curve, whereby you need to determine where is the proportional limit, yield point, UTS, on, and also fracture point. So what happen if we apply load beyond the yield point and beyond the UTS? point okay so you need to know you need to know all the information there and another thing is if uh, some some steel uh, some steel material having a different uh, different stress chain curve for example a steel material uh, they will have some uh, yield point phenomenon okay we call it as yield point phenomenon whereby Okay, for example, this is stress strain. Okay, for this steel material, they will show you exactly where is the yield point. Okay, this is the yield, this is upper yield point. And this is lower yield point. Okay, so in order for us to determine the yield point, okay, the yield point, we will use this lower, lower yield point. This is our sigma y yield point. So for this particular material, uh, steel material, they will show us exactly where is the yield point. Okay, so we do not, we will not use this, uh, this uh, offset 0 0.02 for this particular graph. For this uh, graph, okay, for this graph, because we do not know, we do not know clearly the yield point, so we need to know this. We need to measure the yield point using the zero point zero two offset. Next slide, I will show you how to measure this zero point zero two offset. Okay, important parameters here. We have we already know the stress, strain, and elastic modulus. For E value, E value is in this elastic region or in this linear region. Okay, this is E, which is your Young modulus, and poison ratio V. I will explain detail later. And then uh, this depends on the load mode, either tension or shear. Alright. Okay, for this elastic deformation under tensile loading. So in previous slide, I show you. I'll show you. This is the uh, area where the elastic uh, region is happened. This blue color. Right. So here, elastic deformation under tensile load. So this is the elastic region. This elastic region is reversible. 
when the stress is removed. Okay, like I mentioned previously, when we remove the stress, so it will return back to its original position. Okay, so this is elastic, this is the yield point, this is the proportional limit, like I told you before, this is the proportional limit. Since these uh, do not show exactly the yield point phenomenon, okay, so we need to measure or we need to identify the yield point. Where is the yield point? So how? So we use 0 0.02, 0 0.002 offset, okay? So you measure here 0 0.02, 0 0.002 offset, and then you make a parallel line, parallel line within this linear line, make parallel line, and you plot it here. So this will be your yield stress or yield point, okay? So basically, if we apply load beyond this line, this will become permanently deformed, which is plastic deformation. Alright, so for plastic deformation is here after the yield point and it is ir irreversible. Means that when the stress is removed, the material does not return to its previous dimension or to its pre original dimension. Okay, so it becomes a permanent deformation. Alright, okay, let us look at this, this one. Deformation that is non-permanent. Uh, deformation occurs in which stress and strain are proportional. Okay, so in elastic deformation, which is in this area, elastic region, the deformation is not permanent. So when we remove the stress, it will return back to return back to its original position, original dimension, and then the stress and strain are proportional. See, it's a linear linear line. Okay, the result of plot graph stress strain is linear relationship. So this is linear relationship and the slope in this uh, linear region is uh, referring to modulus of elasticity which is your E value. Okay, so higher E is higher stiffness. For example, you have a few material. Okay, a few material showing you some uh, A and B material. A and B material. So this is stress versus strain. Alright, if you look into this graph, stress versus strain, you can determine where whether A or B is stiffer. Because if, if we refer to this statement, higher A means that higher stiffness. So if you measure at this strain, this strain, so you can see here if you measure the A here, so this A is higher compared to B material. So meaning, meaning to say this A material have a higher stiffness compared to the B material. Normally ceramic material have uh, uh, the most highest uh, stiffness compared maybe this uh, this is some, some metal material. What happened in atomic level or atomic scale during the elastic, uh, in, in this elastic region, okay, in this elastic region. So, what happened actually? Okay, initial, uh, at initial, atoms stretch apart, but no bonds are broken. So, no bonds are broken, okay. Say, for example, here, we take this, uh, in this uh, region, this is the atom. So, the atom is start to stretch, but there's no uh, broken bond, okay, broken bond. And then if we continuous with the force, we apply force, we continue with force. So we can see here there's some uh, strain here, okay. And what happened here, the test piece begin to stretch, but the strain is small, okay. This strain is still small, even though we try to stretch or even though we try to apply the force, the tensile force. But uh, the strain is still small, okay. So here you can see, start to stretch, okay. The test or the atom start to stretch, but the strain is still small. Alright, and then after that, what happened here? 
we unload it. We remove the load. We remove the stresses. So, what happened? It will go back to its original position. Return to initial back. Okay, if load release, bond return to original, which is unstretched position. It's like spring. Okay, we can um, imagine that in this elastic widget, it's like spring. Okay, so we apply load, they will go to this, and then we release it, it come back. It's like spring uh, application. Okay? Alright, so what happened here is, uh, this is the force versus interatomic separation for weakly and strongly bonded atoms. So, this uh, red color is strong bonded, and this is weak color is the, uh, so this is, the blue color is weak bonded. Okay, so if we uh, uh, use this uh, this separation R, this is this radius. So we can see here the force that we need to separate this particular material, which have the strong bonded, it's quite high. Okay, higher forces needed to separate this strong bonded. Compare with this blue color. The force needed is quite high, uh, sorry, quite low. Alright, on an atomic scale, macroscopic elastic strain is defined as small changes in the interatomic spacing and the stretching of interatomic bond. So, here in interatomic spacing and also interatomic bond, there's some small changes, which mean that this E, okay. In your stress strain, this is in your stress strain curve, this E value in linear region. So, this E value is basically a measure of resistance to separation of adjacent atom, which is its interatomic bonding forces. Okay, so the resistance to separate this interatomic bonding. So, this is E. Okay, whereby this E is depend on what type of material. Normally for metal and ceramic, they have um, the values of E is uh, about the same. Alright, for this metal and ceramic. If you compare to polymer material, polymer material uh, is quite low. Alright. Another important thing in modulus of elasticity A is the relation between the stress and st strain. Okay? Alright. So, basically we have this uh, stress and strain curve. Okay? So, in this linear region or in elastic, elastic region, so we have this linear graph and this slope is referring to the E value. This is your modulus of elasticity. So, this is also known as Hooke's law. Okay, this relation is also known as Hooke's law, whereby stress is equal to E over E times with the, the strain. Okay, E is the modulus which uh, has a Newton meter per meter square units, and E is the slope of the graph. Okay, this modulus of elasticity also refer to the stiffness of the material. Okay, whereby it receives to the uh, elastic deformation. Meaning that if the greater, if the modulus is higher, where is your E is higher, the stiffer the material. Alright, so for example, you have this, uh, this kind of graph, stress strain graph, and two uh, material here. Okay, if you look into this uh, graph, A and B material, so... Uh, which of this material have uh, stiffer? Which is material is stiffer, A or B? Okay, so we plot it here, somewhere here, the uh, strain. And we use, we measure it, the E value. And definitely, okay, A will be the stiffer material. Because the E value of this A material is higher compared to this B material. Alright. So, these are uh, figures on the linear elastic and also non-linear elastic. So, next slide, I'll show you the, the difference between linear elastic and non-linear elastic. Okay, so this is linear elastic and non-linear elastic. 
So previously we already discussed on this linear elastic whereby we have this kind of this point which is proportional uh, limits, right? Proportional limits and the yield point is not stated clearly. So what we are going to do is we need to uh, measure or we need to identify the yield point by using this 0 0.002 offset, right? So here the string, we measure 0 0.002 and we make some parallel line, okay? Parallel line with this linear line here. And the intersection between this line, this parallel line with the graph is the yield point, all right? Okay, compared to this uh, B graph, which is non-linear graph, as I mentioned previously, we have uh, some kind of uh, yield uh, phenomenon, okay, yield drop point phenomenon, whereby we have upper yield point and also lower yield point. So, which one we need to uh, determine, which, which is uh, the yield point in this particular graph, okay? So, this is the yield point. As I mentioned previously, in lower yield point, so this would be our yield point. Okay, so uh, there are some materials with nonlinear elastic. Uh, for example, it's in steel or cast iron, and then some concrete and also some polymers material. We're having these kind of uh, nonlinear elastic. So, in, for nonlinear elastic, we do not need to use this kind of offset because we already know the as, exactly the yield point because it's stated here clearly. All right. Okay, for this nonlinear behavior, either tangent or second modulus is normally used. Okay, so this is the definition of E in this nonlinear behavior. Tangent modulus as the slope of the stress strain curve at some specified level of stress, whereas the second second modulus is slope of a second drawn from the origin to some given point of the stress strain curve. So you can see here this is the tangent modulus. You make some tangent here, all right? Okay. So the E value is somewhere here. Okay, using this tangent modulus. Alright, and another one is second modulus between the original. Okay, between the original from here and into uh, stress uh, or this number one. Okay, so you make seconds here and you will find this uh, E value. Okay, delta stress over delta string. Okay, the difference between uh, stress, this is stress, and this is strain. Okay, so this is for the nonlinear behavior. Alright, let us look at the value of this young modulus. We compare with metal polymer and then ceramic, sorry, metal alloy, ceramic, polymers, and some composite or fibrous material. Previously, I told you that ceramic almost similar with metal alloy uh, because you see here from silicon carbide into graphite is almost almost similar except the diamond because the diamond, because of the uh, crystalline structure of diamond, will give you uh, will give you an E value, a higher E value. Okay, all right. So here tungsten, molybdenum having around four hundred. Okay, 400 to 500 gigapascal. So, make sure you know giga, gig is 10 power 9. If megapascal is 10 power 6. Okay, don't get confused with this uh, giga and megapascal, right? And uh, for polymer material, the E value is quite low, right? Around 4, 0 0.2 up to 4 or 5 um, gigapascal, right? Because composite fiber is the combination of a few material. For example, it's a, a M MMC, MMC, metal metric composite, or combination of polymer, polymer metal composite. So the value of E is 
in between uh, metal ceramic and also as low as this polymer material. Alright. Okay, as the conclusion of this stress strain behavior, uh, we will have this kind of uh, uh, formula that you need to know or need to understand, which is shear versus tension or compress. Tension or compress is almost the uh, same, same uh, formula except the uh, signage which is positive for tension and compression because it's compressed the specimen, it's negative signs. Right, for shear, uh, we have your tau is equal to Fs, your shear forces over the A0, okay, original cross-section area. And this is what the stress. And for the strain, so you have here gamma, gamma is equal to tan theta. Tan theta uh, is the delta x over y. All right. Okay, for the tension or compression, we have stress. We have Hooke's law. Hooke's law is relation between the stress. This is the stress and strain, which uh, which denote as the uh, stress is equal to E times with the strain. E is modulus of elasticity, or you can use this E is equal to stress over strain. Okay, so here you know that stress is equal to F over a naught all right so here we can we can um, represent the stress using this formula e is equal to f over a which is your stress over epsilon which is your strain strain is equal to uh, delta l over l naught whereby l l i l naught over L naught. Alright, so you rephrase this uh, formula using this equation. Okay, so another thing, you also can replace this stress with is equal to E epsilon with E, your elastic modulus, modulus of elasticity, time with the, uh, this is uh, strain is equal to delta L over L naught. This is the relation with strain. You can play around with this formula as long as you know that stress is equal to Fa, which is the, uh, and another formula is for the strain formula, delta L over L naught. Right, and also the Hooke's law. This is the Hooke's law. Then you can play around with this uh, and you can arrange this uh, formulation based on the question needed. All right. Another thing is strain is equal to sigma over E. Okay, so this is the relation with the stresses. Okay, whereby uh, stress, this is stress. Okay, F over A naught times with E. Alright. Uh, I hope you understand. Okay, so we will go to the next uh, subtopic which is poison ratio. Right, let us look at this poison ratio, which is V. What is V? What does it mean by uh, V, uh, ratio? Okay, before that, we need to understand what happened during unloaded and loaded material. So, uh, this is unloaded material. Okay, this is the dimension, the original dimension. And then when we apply forces, let's say it's in tension, because it's in tension forces, this uh, material will having some different in the, in the dimension. Okay, you can see here, this uh, blue is the original one. Original. Okay, and the black is the new uh, dimension. So, we will have some different in the length here in the z direction. Alright, okay, so this in z direction. And in the same time, if we use, uh, if we look into this uh, x and also y directions, okay, this is x and y directions. There's also some changes, okay, some changes happen here. So the, there will be constriction in this lateral. We call this as lateral, which is x and y, x and y direction. 
All right, so the ratio, the ratio is referring to the lateral and also the axial strain. Okay, axial strain is in Z direction because the load is in this way. All right, and then the lateral is in X and Y. Since the X and Y given the a negative value because of the decrease of the uh, dimension, so we will having a negative value of the uh, lateral uh, string. Okay. Alright, so theoretical value for isotropic materials is around 0 0.25 and then the maximum value is 0 0.5. So typical value for metals is this one, ceramic 0 0.25, metal 0 0.33 and polymers will be 0 0.44. These are the standard value for Poisson ratio uh, in each of these type of material. Okay. Okay, now let us look at this uh, relation between elastic modulus E and also shear modulus. Before that, you need to differentiate between this E value, which is your elastic modulus, and also G value, which is your shear modulus. What does it mean by E and G? Okay, when you uh, apply tensile stress in this particular material, the modulus of elasticity is represented by E value. But if you use or if you apply a shear uh, shear force here, this is Fs, so the modulus uh, of shear is represented by G value. So make sure you know how to use this either E or G value. G is specifically for the shear modulus. Alright, okay, let us look at this uh, unloaded material. So this is unloaded material, it's original form. And then this is the loaded material okay loaded material so we try to uh, apply shear force here so what happened to the material okay, there's there's some displacement here for the strain this is delta y and this is z all right so for the strain of this shear force which is referring to gamma is equal to tan theta so this is the theta Okay, the angle, the shear angle for this particular material. Okay, so here, oh yeah, we have it here, tan theta or delta y, which is this is delta y times with over z naught. All right, that is for the strain. And for the stress shear, shear stress, this is shear strain. And this is shear stress. Okay, for the shear stress, uh, we can use as Hooke's law. If you remember, Hooke's law for the tensile uh, stress, we have stress is equal to E strain. Isn't it? This is the Hooke's law. Alright. So, we can apply same relationship with this uh, shear stress, which is tau is equal to G, your shear modulus, times with gamma. Gamma is your shear strain. Right? So, G is shear modulus. You need also same, which, which is Newton per meter square. Okay. Right. For isotropic materials, this is the uh, relation between E and also G. Okay. We answering this uh, relation between elastic modulus E and also shear modulus G. So, this is the relation. E is equal to 2 times G, your shear, shear modulus, uh, bracket, 1 plus times with 1 plus V. V is your poison ratio. Okay. And G is almost... Uh, 0. Point, normally G, which is your shear modulus, is approximately 0. 0.4 E. Okay? So, I hope you understand how uh, the relation between the elastic modulus E and also G, how you are going to, uh, to and then you do know how to differentiate between this E, okay, and also G, and you know how to 
uh, make some equation or calculation by using this relationship between E and G. Alright. Okay. Other elastic properties. Uh, we have elastic shear modulus. Uh, okay. This is G. Okay. Okay. Same with this pre previous notes. This is tau is equal to G, your shear modulus. This is under shear stress. Okay. This is G, your modulus, shear modulus. And then elastic bulk modulus, which is referring to K. P is equal to minus K delta V over V naught. Alright. This reflect, reflect to the pressure. Okay, P is reflect to the pressure. And then some special relation for isotropic materials. Okay, as I mentioned previously, this is the formula. Okay, and this is for shear modulus. And another one is for modulus of bulk, which is K. K is equal to E over 3 times with 1 minus 2 V. Alright, so these are other elastic properties that you need to know the, the equation here. Alright, next, uh, we go for some example problem. Okay, so let us look at this example problem number one. Okay, a piece of copper originally 305 mm long is pulled in tension. So, it stayed here in tension. So, meaning that this uh, copper is under tension tension stress okay so the original original uh, original length is 305 mm okay uh, is pulled in tension with a stress of 276 megapascal so we have stress here is equal to 276 megapascal if the deformation is entirely elastic, what does it mean by entirely elastic? It means that if you look into stress strain graph, it's only entirely elastic. It means in this region, what will be the resultant elongation? So they ask us to measure the elongation, the strain of this material. Okay, given that uh, they're given as a modulus of elasticity, which is your E. This is shear modulus G and this poison, poison ratio. So, previously I told you that you need to differentiate between E and G because this material is under tension. So, we will choose E value. Okay? So, let us look at the answer. Okay. Since the deformation is elastic, Okay, since the deformation is elastic, strain is dependent on stress according to equation 6.5. Furthermore, the elongation delta L is related to the original L node through equation 6.2. Combine these two expressions and solve for delta Y yield. Okay, so we have stress. Uh, we use this uh, Hooke's law. Okay, Hooke's law. Hooke's law said that stress is E times with the strain. Alright, so this is the Hooke's law. So you rearrange it. So E is your Young modulus and strain is your delta L over L0, which is this one. Okay, so you rearrange this equation. So you will get delta L is equal to Stress time with L naught over E. Right, because we have we, we already have this 276 megapascal, this stress, we already have it. And then the original length is 305 mm. Alright, and then E, the magnitude of E, we uh, get it from the table 6.1. Copper, copper, the modulus of elasticity is about 110 gigapascal. So, we can substitute all the value into this formula. So, delta L is equal to 0 0.77 millimeter. Alright, easy right? It's just uh, 
means the question is quite direct. You just need to know this Hooke's law, Hooke's law, this equation, and you can rearrange and find the delta L. All right. Okay, next is the example problem number two. Okay, computation of load to produce specified diameter changes. All right. A tensile stress, a tensile stress is to be applied along the long axis of cylindrical brass rod that has a diameter of 10 mm. Okay, so this material, the brass rod, is under tension. So, for example, this is under tension. Determine the, okay, before that, the diameter is around 10 mm. It's around the diameter D0 is equal to 10 mm. Right. Determine the magnitude of the load to require load required to produce 2.5 times 10 power minus 3 mm change in diameter. Means that the delta D is equal to 2.5 times 10 minus 3 mm. If the deformation is entirely plastic, elastic, sorry, el elastic. So if let's say if they say it's entirely elastic, then we can use the Hooke's law. Okay, the Hooke's law. Since it's in tension, so stress is equal to E strain. Right. So this is the first formula that you need to remember. Okay, based on the question. So they ask us to find the magnitude of the load required. So they ask us to find the load. How much the load need to be applied in order to get these changes in diameter. Okay, given that uh, the modulus of elasticity, which is your E and shear modulus G, is this uh, value. And then they also give us the poison ratio, which is this V value. Okay, since it is a uh, brass road, brass, so we will use this value. Okay. Let us look at the uh, solution. Okay, this deformation situation is represented in the accompanying drawing. Okay, so uh, we apply tension stress. So what happened? Uh, there are some changes in the length of the brass material. So we have L0 here and Li. So in Z direction, which is in Z direction, strain at Z direction is equal to delta L over L0. Right? This is this is the uh, equation. So Li minus okay, minus L0. Right? Alright. And then another one is the strain at the lateral okay lateral axis which is ex uh, sorry which is epsilon x so epsilon x in the x direction is equal to delta d over d naught right in the question they, they already give us this value delta d over d naught so what we will do is we measure the uh, strain at this x axis so, epsilon x is equal to delta d over d naught, which is minus 2.5. You need to uh, write this minus value, uh, sorry, this minus sign because uh, we, the diameter is decreased, okay, from the original diameter. So, since the, it is decreased, so we need to put this negative sign. So, negative 2.5 times 10 minus 3 mm over 10 mm, which is the original diameter. So, it's equal to 2.5 times 10 minus 4. Okay. Alright, next, uh, we need to calculate the strain at the z value, at the z axis. Alright. Okay, next become necessary to calculate the strain in the z direction. Okay, so using the Poisson ratio. Okay, previous uh, previous slide we already learned on the Poisson ratio. So E z, 
uh, epsilon z is equal to minus epsilon x over v. So since the poison ratio for brass is 0 0.34, okay, where is it? Uh, this is the poison ratio of brass. So we use uh, v is equal to 0 0.34 and we uh, substitute all the value into these equations. Okay, so we, ha we will have this answer 7.35 times 10 power minus 4 for the epsilon z direction or for the uh, uh, strain at the z direction. Then the plus stress may now be computed using equation 6.5 and the modulus of elasticity given in table 6.1 as 97 gigapascal. So we use this modulus of elasticity since it is in tangent tension uh, force okay all right so stress using the hooke's law this is hooke's law hooke's law stress is equal to strain strain e okay so we plug in the value the stress uh, strain z strain z at z direction is 77.35 times 10 power minus 4 times with the E value. E value here is 70, 97 times with 10 power 3 megapascal. Okay, this is gigapascal. Gigapascal, remember, is like uh, 10 power 3 megapascal. Gigapascal is like 9, 9 power 9. Megapascal is uh, 10 power 6. So we represent because we want to have this unit, megapascal. So we just change. Uh, this uh, gigapascal into 10 power 3 megapascal is similar with gigapascal all right finally from equation 6.1 the applied force may be determined as so because we need to find the f value so f uh, stress is equal to f over a naught this 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 uh, formula you need to remember so you rearrange it as f is equal to stress times a you you already have this uh, stress value okay and a naught uh, which is referring to your d naught over 2 uh, squared pi right your, your area because it's a um, circular area okay and then you plug in all the value and uh, lastly you get the final answer would be 5000 and 600 new time okay so quite easy but you need to know um, how to find those formula all right and differentiate between the g or e either you need to use the e value or the g value it's depend on the types of uh, load that you apply on that particular material all right so these are the table 6.1 okay i'll show you table 6.1 uh, you have modulus of elasticity which is your e you have shear modulus t and also poison ratio these are sample some of the uh, metal alloys and then uh, with increasing temperature the modulus of elasticity is diminished okay you can see here uh, this is temperature you increase the temperature and let's say uh, in this temperature, we increase it. The elasticity, when we increase the temperature, the elasticity, modulus of elasticity, which is your E, uh, is diminished. All right? uh, these are three types of materials, which is aluminium, steel, and tungsten. You can see here the aluminium have lower E value, means that this tungsten material is stiffer than steel and aluminium. Okay? Right. Okay. So we already discussed on the elastic deformations under tensile loading. Right. Now we go for the plastic deformation. Okay. Plastic deformation under tensile loading. So uh, we already known that plastic deformation is not reversible. Okay. Irreversible. And when the stress is removed, the material does not return to its previous dimension. Okay, it's permanent uh, deformation. Alright, so deformation also occur with stress and strain are not proportional.
Okay, if you look into this graph, this is an elastic uh, deformation. So this uh, proportional limits. Okay, in if the material, if we apply stresses around this uh, linear region before the proportional limit, and then we remove the stress. So what happened? It will going back to this original position. Okay. It's different between the plastic deformation whereby the deformation occurs which stress and strain are not proportional. Okay, beyond this, beyond this yield point. All right, for most metallic material, elastic deformation only to strain about 0 0.05. As the material is deformed beyond this point, the stress is no longer proportional to the strain and permanent non-recoverable or plastic deformation was occur as i mentioned previously when we do when we uh, apply the load beyond this yield point so it will become a plastic region plastic region okay and it will deform permanently right and it will not uh, return back to its original position okay if you look into these uh, figures we have TS tensile strength, which is your UTS, UTS ultimate tensile strength, and then uh, here uh, we have this uh, linear. This is the linear region, all right. And we apply load until somewhere here. So what happened to your material? This material is starting to deform. It's deform permanently, right? Slowly deform permanently until they reach at the UTS which is your ultimate tensile strength until they reach at UTS point and after that if we still apply continuously apply the load so what happened to our material uh, our material become necking uh, actually this uh, I've covered it in previous slide so I just uh, going detail on this uh, uh, process which is this is necking process okay your material start to necking and if we still continue give the force then it will fail which is fracture happen okay the the materials or your materials will broke into two pieces right okay so these are the thing in a plastic deformation these are what happened during plastic deformation whereby when we uh, give load beyond let's say this is the yield point so permanently deform okay your, your material will permanently deform your material with will be uh, under plastic deformation all right okay let us look what happened during plastic deformation okay so uh, here we have material and we apply some load here which is under tension and then uh, we will get this kind of graph which is stress versus strain graph okay so here if you look into this graph if we apply the load if we apply stress up to this point which is in linear in linear uh, line here so what happened is in elastic region so the material will going back to its origin dimensional its original dimension Okay, so it will not, uh, it is elastic deformation, whereby it's irreversible. It is not a permanent deformation. So it will come back to its original deformation. The material behaves exactly like spring. It's going up and it's going down back. Alright, it's actually, we already discussed this uh, elastic region in previous notes. But here, what happens if we continue give, continuously give the, uh, we apply the load in this material. So this is what happened. This is the region where we have elastic and plastic region. Okay. All right. And if we continuously give the load and stresses and up to this point, this point, we remove the load. We remove the stress. What happened? Uh, actually, our material... If we remove this uh, load, our material will come back to its. Uh, will come back along this line, okay, along this linear 
line parallel with this linear region okay so this is a permanent plastic okay our material uh, having a permanent which is a plastic deformation after the load is removed and here is uh, actually the uh, total of the strain strain uh, which is in plastic region so we call it as plastic strain okay all right so these are the things that happen during plastic deformation you have uh, this kind of elastic and plastic at larger stresses in this region elastic and plastic region because uh, somewhere here we have the p which is your proportional limit because of this uh, difficult because the difficulties in determining this proportional limit so we need to uh, use this 0 0.002 offset okay by the way that is already covered in previous lecture all right so next we look into the uh, atomic level what happened to the atom during the plastic deformation okay for at initial stage which is no no stress is being applied uh, the atom is uh, this this uh, in this uh, position. Okay, there's no uh, stretches of bone. Okay, because it's in initial stages. All right, and then when we apply loading, we apply this tension under tension. So it start the bone is start to stretch, and pla plane shear. This is the plane. It start to shear. Okay. Uh, all right, and we have this. Uh, deformation which is delta this deformation the, the elongation of that particular material all right because it's elastic and plastic okay because we have elastic and plastic deformation and then at some certain level which is in uh with if we unload it we have all right let us look at this atomic perspective of this plastic deformation okay this is inertial where where we don't have any uh, load here okay okay so this is the arrangement of the atom and then when we apply load in the elastic and plastic region so what happened is the bond the atomic bond stretches it start to stretch and also this plane this is the plane okay the plane start to shear okay and we have these uh, delta uh, the different the delta l which is elastic we have this strain which is elastic plus plastic okay let us look at the atomic perspective during plastic deformation okay so here is the inertial without any load so no load here no f okay so the atom is arranged in that way in that manners and then when we apply load here okay we apply some load here so we have this elastic and plastic region okay so what happened to the atomic bonding the bond the atom bonds start to stretch okay it start to stretch here okay and also the plane start to shear this is the plane okay this is the plane plane start to shear okay so here uh, during the plastic deformation, the breaking breaking of bond with original atom neighbors and reforming bond with new neighbors. Okay, what happened during that plastic deformation is the breaking bond with original uh, with the atom neighbors and reform bond with new neighbors. Right, as large numbers of atom or molecule move relative to one another. Okay, this is what happened during loading number two all right and then upon removal of stress so then we remove which is which is unload we remove the stress what happened the plane still shear okay because it's having the plastic deformation so the plane is still shear it cannot return back to its original position right so these uh, represent the strain of pl plastic strain okay all right Upon removal stress, they do not return to its to their original position. So this is what happened in this uh, number figure number three here. All right, we already uh, discussed uh, the concept of stress and strain. 
and then you already know the uh, types of load that we can apply during this stress strength which is uh, either tension test, compression test, shear, st shear test and also torsion test and then we also discuss on the elastic as well as the plastic deformation what happened during that uh, deformation process okay so uh, this will be the end of our lecture we will continue next lecture on the mechanical properties so i end my lecture with thank you and take care